We move now to a different and much wider interpretation of the field of sparse representation as a universal method for data modeling. We start by adopting a wider perspective towards the topic of data processing. Consider the following set of data sources, voice, visual data of all sorts, traffic information, and more. While being quite different from each other, these sources share something fundamental in common. Each of these has an internal structure, rules these signals obey. In fact, this very structure is the reason for our ability to process these sources. Let us demonstrate this through a simple example. Imagine that we build a sensor in order to measure a specific physical phenomenon over time, taking one measurement every morning at 7 a.m. This graph describes the accumulated data after a month or so. Unfortunately, since we have built this sensor, we know that it is imperfect, being contaminated by an additive white noise of known standard deviation. Our goal now is to clean the gathered data from the noise based only on the information I have given you so far. Is it possible? Well, the unfortunate answer is negative. This cannot be done. Now suppose that an expert on this physical phenomenon reveals to us that the behavior over time is expected to be of a piecewise constant form. That is, the measurements tend to be the same apart from sudden jumps now and then. Could we clean the signal now? The answer is positive. We could seek a piecewise signal that would be closest to our measurements while leading to an error that matches the noise power. What happened here? Our ability to remove the noise relied on a model for the underlying signal. Interestingly, such models are central not just for denoising. They are relevant for almost everything we do on data sources. There are many models out there aiming to serve signals of interest. Such models are typically given as mathematical descriptions of the rules the signals are believed to obey. For example, these are a few of the popular models in image processing. When posing a new model, there is always a delicate tension between the desire to suggest the simplest possible form so as to keep the consequent algorithm simple and the need to, to do justice to the actual content of the data serving well the information source. As another example, consider the well-known JPEG algorithm for compressing natural images. Why does it work so well? What is its underlying model? Natural images are believed to follow the following rule. Given any small patch of pixels from such images, applying the discrete cosine transform on it results in a highly concentrated set of coefficients. And so, a compression effect is obtained by taking only few dominant coefficients from the top left corner. Would this model be appropriate for radar imaging? The answer is definitely no, implying that one needs to match a model to the data source carefully. A careful inspection of the literature in signal and image processing would reveal the following regular pattern that appears in many papers. The authors start by choosing the signal of interest, for example, face images. Then they define the model imposed on this source, for example, PCA or Gaussian mixture model. The story proceeds by defining an engineering task, for example, recovery from some degradations. All these are merged to a mathematical formulation of the problem and an algorithm to solve it. And what all this leads to? A new paper. If you want to write your own paper, it would be sufficient to start from such a paper and modify one of these blocks, such as replacing the signal of interest, the model, etc. Indeed, the literature in signal image processing is an evolution of models, improving over time and developing ways to use them for different tasks, this way leading to better and better performing algorithms. So we come back to our initial question. What is this field all about? The answer is this. Sparse representation theory puts forward a new and highly effective data model, along with the required tools for using it in practice. As we have said before, almost every task in signal and image processing relies on a model. In this course, we introduce the sparse land model, a powerful and flexible tool with far-reaching impact. The sparse land model is not coming out of the blue. It is, in fact, relying on the vast knowledge gathered in the past several decades in several close-by disciplines. Transforms in signal processing, and especially wavelet theory, provide some of the foundations for this model. Sparseland is relying on mathematical concepts studied in approximation theory and tools taken from linear algebra and optimization. And beyond these, Sparseland borrows ideas from machine learning in the context of adapting the model to a given data source. And the product of all these foundations 
is a model that has been shown to effectively treat numerous applications, leading in all of these to state-of-the-art results. This is our story, and it is a story worth telling.